In this presentation, we are going to be looking at an introduction to R for actuarial students. In particular, we are going to be looking at the log normal distribution. So this corresponds to the CS1B curriculum that actuarial students may be familiar with. That is an introduction to R programming, fundamentals of statistical analysis and probabil probability distributions. This corresponds to question two of the playlist and the paper that that corresponds to, and it features the log normal distribution and also elements about statistical theory such as the central limit theorem. Just as a quick remark, the exam is ex uh, is carried out on the basis of base R mostly, with just some suggestions about some other packages where relevant. So it doesn't include tidyverse or ggplot or anything like that, and we work on that basis. Sometimes I will mention other packages outside the syllabus, but that's just an extra thing. Okay, so a bit of theory about the log normal distribution. Let Z be a standard normal normal variable and let mu and sigma, where they're greater than zero, be two real numbers. Then the distribution of the random variable X equals the exponential of mu plus sigma Z, it's called the log normal distribution with parameters mu and sigma. Okay, so the underlying distribution is a normal distribution, a standard normal distribution. But the and so when we specify the log normal distribution, we will use sigma and mu, mu and sigma, the f which come from the underlying distribution. But just as a quick remark, the distribution uh, of the log normal distribu distribution will be quite different. Here we have expressions for the mean and variance. For example, the expected value of x from the log normal distribution is the exponent, the e to the power of mu plus sigma squared over two, and there is also an expression for the variance. I'll move on because it's just a mouthful and we don't really need it. So just as a quick remark, in case you're not familiar with the exponential function we just give it a go there exp is the exponential function so that is e to the power of 0 0.5 and we get 1.64 okay so when we want to try that out with a more elaborate expression 2 plus 0 0.5 squared divided by 2 which is going to be the values that we're going to be using we get 8.372 okay better keep that one in mind actually so the question is, generate a sample of 10,000 random observations following a log normal distribution with parameters mu equals 2 and sigma squared equals 0 0.5. Bit of a cheat there because really I should specify it in terms of sigma, which is 0 0.5, the square root of that. Display the first few simulations using the head function, and we're going to use a seed of 100 to generate the random numbers. So set seed. 100 okay so the command here is as follows the function we're going to use is r l norm l norm corresponds to log normal distribution r corresponds to ra random numbers okay we are going to create 10,000 of them and the arguments for the log normal family of functions is mean log and sd log mean log equals 2 mu equals 2 and sd log equals 0 0.5 that is standard deviation log, okay? So, and remember, it's 0 0.5 because that's the square root of 0 0.25, which we are told is the variance. So, just have a look at the first few items there. We, this head command prints out the first six items, or the first six observations. 5.748, 7.89, 7.10, 11.5, 12.5, 13.5, 14.5, 15.5, 16.5, 7.83, and 8.66. Okay, so that's fine. If you try different seed numbers, you should get slightly different results. But anyway, we'll move on. And uh, there's a summary of the data we have created, which may be of interest. Uh, you notice there we have the sample mean there is 8.3756. That's very close to our expected value earlier on. Just, you know, I'm building up to something there. Okay. Exercise 2. Compute the mean, the sample mean, median and variance from the generated sample and compare these values with those of the population following a log normal distribution with the given parameters. Okay, So we have a data set here called data1 and it comprises 10,000 randomly generated numbers from the log normal distribution. 
let's have a look at the mean, the ver median, and the variance. Okay. So the command is mean of data one. We saved that uh, data set as data one. Okay. Just 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 go back there. There we have that there. Data one. And the median. The mean is eight point three seven five six, which I've just actually stated before. The median is 7.3984 and the variance is 19.5136 okay so we can compare those to the analytical values these are the values that one would expect from a theoretical point of view so the the formula based mean values which is to say derived from first value, uh, first principles okay is the exponential of 2 plus 0 0.25 squared, or 0 0.25, that's 0 0.5 squared. I just simplified it there, divided by 2. And in that case, the theoretical mean should be 8.3728. The median the is the exponential of 2. Okay, I didn't tell you where that came from, but that's the median there. That's how you generate the median. It's the exponential mu, and we get 7.38. Another way of doing this is using the quantile function, QL norm, uh, 0 0.5, because the median is the 50th percentile, okay? And those are the arguments to the log normal family of dis uh, functions, okay? Mean log equals 2, SD log equals 0 0.5, and we get more or less the same answer. So, 7.389... 7 very close that's 7.398 and 8.372 8.375 very close indeed actually let's just look at variance this is using the formula that I presented earlier it is 19.91 and that corresponds to 19.51 again fairly close just as a remark, the this formula here is corresponds to the variance formula I sort of mentioned when I was talking about the log normal distribution. I didn't really go into it in detail, but that is how you carry it out. Okay. Now, the mean and the median and the variance of the generated sample and those computed based on the parameters are almost equal, fairly equal, very good uh, matchup because of the sample size being so large, 10,000. Okay. Generating a much larger sample would bridge bridge those smaller differences existing between them as well. So essentially, the larger the sampling size, the less the smaller the sampling fluctuations you will get, which is to say the difference between population means population analytical values such as the population mean and population variance and the corresponding sample mean and sample variance. As the sample size increases, these sample fl sampling fluctuations dissipate. To, to, to the point that they become negligible okay exercise three treat the data generated in exercise one as a population okay so what we're going to do is generate 5,000 random samples of size 200 from the above population and compute the sample mean uh, from each sample using a seed value of 100 to generate the random numbers okay so just set it up again Okay, so we have our data set set up again. What we're going to do is here we have created a sample of 10,000 observations. Okay. Now, so in this part, what we're going to do is take out a sample from that 10,000. Sorry, let's just go there. Uh, oh, we're going to take out 200 items. And in this case, we're going to go replace equals false. We'll just sort of use that as default there that we can't uh, select the same item again. We've got a large enough sample, so I don't need, we think we need replacement uh, or sampling with replacement. Okay. So that creates, that plucks out 200 values from that 10,000. Okay. And what this command does when I expand it out a bit this generates the mean of that sample. So it's the mean of the 200 values we've just created. Okay. Now replicate 5,000 of this function here. So essentially it performs this function that I have highlighted, or this uh, command, okay, which is a composite of mean and sample and just the arguments. 
and it saves the value, the output, from that highlighted piece of code for each of the 5,000 iterations. Okay, so essentially what I'm going to do is sample the data 5,000 times and save the mean and save it in an object called means. Okay, so that's that. This is another way of doing it using a for loop. This might be a little bit easier to follow. So for i in 1 to 5,000, we pick out selected rows, okay, and we, this just picks out the row number. So there's 10,000 observations, okay. We pick out 200 of those observations, and these correspond to the indices, so the 1st, the 5th, the 19th, and so on. And then we use these indices to collect up the relevant values from data 1, which we've created previously. And this is our selected data set. We get the sample mean of that. And then we add it to our collection that we have started here with this line of code. So this starts a collection. It, it starts off empty. And on an ongoing basis, we add means to that, the sample mean from each, each, each iteration to that collection. And then at the end, we have 5,000 means. So it's a bit more long-winded of, of an approach, but I get that people might be sort of more familiar with for loops. Okay, I prefer that approach myself using replicate, but you know, if it works for you, it works for you. Okay. So plot the histogram of the sample means, generate an exercise tree, and interpret the distribution of the sample means. So we have collected up our data, and we're going to create a histogram of that. I'm going to do make some additional commands here just to make the graph, the plot we're going to make easier to look at, the histogram. Breaks equals 50, and color scheme of light blue, light green, and light pink. You don't have to do that, actually. It just makes it easier to look at. So that's what we get. This is the distribution of the sample means of the samples drawn from the log normal distribution. Now, you can tell that it's reasonably bell curved there. Okay, bell shaped. And so we would sort of suggest uh, seemingly be happy enough with the notion that the distribution of the sample means drawn from the log normal distribution is actually a normal random variable. Okay, because that gives us a fairly decent approximation of a bell curve. You can actually go for more breaks there if you want and a larger sample size. You might get a more fine-tuned bell curve there. That is the notion of the central limit theorem in theory. Okay, Sample means tend to follow a normal distribution, though the actual data comes from the log normal distribution. The central limit theorem can be verified through this exercise that the sample means tend to follow a normal distribution as the sample size increases. Increases in sample size from 200 to a much higher sample size can ensure better appearance of normality of the sample means. Okay, so that's it. So what was the key thing there? Well, you can try out the for loop, but really I recommend getting the hang of this replicate function. Okay, and having a look at that. We leave it there.